Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make these really cool macrame bracelets. And I know that these kind of look complex, but they're actually not. I'm only using three different kinds of knots to make these bracelets. I'm using a lark's head knot, a square knot, and a diagonal double half hitch knot. And just so you know, I don't have a whole lot of macrame skills. I know how to tie a square knot. I know how to make the twisted square knot. And I also know how in the past I did a uh, friendship bracelets when I was a kid so that's really pretty much it and I ended up designing these bracelets and with just with the few knots that I've known I'm very proud of myself I have to say I've always wanted to do a bracelet like this so don't be worried if you're thinking oh I don't think I could do this it looks hard it's actually not bad and like I say in a lot of my videos if you can watch this video and you understand everything I'm saying and doing then definitely give this a try and by the way it's addicting you can't just make one you have to at least make two because it's that much fun and maybe this bracelet will inspire you to get more into macrame and let me know what you think about this project because I really love this kind of jewelry and I would like to do more of it but um, I want to know your opinion so leave me a comment and let me know here is the list of materials you will need to make this bracelet you will need to cut six six foot lengths of 0 0.8 millimeter nylon Chinese knotting cord I got this from BB craft it was a neutrals pack of six different colors and I will leave a link for this down there in the description bar but I also found that BB Craft has totally loaded down their website with the Chinese nylon knitting cord. I love this stuff. It is incredible. Because it's nylon, you can melt it so you don't have to worry about it coming unraveled. You don't have to use glue, which is really awesome. But um, this comes in a bunch of different colors. So you might want to search around on their website at all their cords because you can do pink, blue, green, yellow, any color you want really. But the most important thing is that you use the 0 0.8 millimeter size in order to use seed beads. So you're also going to need seed beads and I am using 80 seed beads. I'm doing two different colors of a blue color and a green color and I'm also using 60 seed beads. I'm doing pink and white and by the way, BB Craft also has seed beads on the website, so I will link seed beads down there below. And you can get their seed beads in huge bags. This here is 60 seed beads, as you can see, there is a ton here. And I also got bronze seed beads there, which is my favorite color. Again, I will link them down below. I don't know if they have 8-0s. They probably do. And it's been some time since I ordered seed beads, but if they do have 8-0 seed beads, I will definitely put a link for them down there in the description bar. You're also going to need, well, this is optional, 4 millimeter spacer beads. So in this bracelet, I used these 4 millimeter metal copper spacer beads from BB Craft because it matched my closure so well and I wanted metallic color in here. But um, you don't have to use 4 millimeter rounds. You can if you want to, it's optional. But for this one, I'm using the 60 seed beads in place because I didn't have. Um, four millimeter bronze beads and they work just fine. It's a bead alternative. You're also going to need for your closure a three loop slide clasp which is this here and this is what I originally wanted to use. I also got these from BB Craft. They are sterling silver. They're really good quality. I wanted to use these really bad but I ended up not doing it because I wanted to do the copper metal color and I also wanted to do brass. So this here would have worked great, but um, I went this way, which is a three-loop chandelier finding that I got from a subscription box. But um, yeah, you have two different options. The thing is, if you do use this closure here, you will have to do more knotting and add more beads because the length of this clasp here is pretty long. It's probably like two inches, so that means I didn't have to do as much work. So yeah, if you use this clasp, you will definitely have to do more knots and more beads, but um, it's still going to be awesome, and I actually really wanted to use that one, but like I said, I went with this color here, so this is the three-loop chandelier finding I'm talking about. You might also be able to find these on BB Craft. I know they're really good at carrying stuff like this, and you're also going to need split rings. Right here's a split ring. You'll need two of them. you also need a toggle. Now, I already set up my end here. So look like this, so that's where the other parts are at. And for melting your cord, you're going to need a lighter. And you're also going to need 
these binder clips. These are so helpful for macrame. I could not do macrame without these. They're very cheap and expensive. You can find them in the office supply store. And what I like to do is I like to attach it to my desk and then I attach my bracelet to it and I work out of this computer uh, keyboard drawer. But you can also attach these to um, a clipboard, some kind of board, maybe a tray like a tea tray. I have a tea tray that I beat in sometimes. Um, I know there's some bead trays that you can connect these on to. Sometimes I'll put the button through here and then I can do my work here. It just keeps your bracelet stationary so you could tie your knots without your knots being all crazy. Alright, so that's the list of materials. Now for the knots, we are going to be tying a few different knots. I'm going to show you how to do a lark's head knot, a square knot, and a diagonal double half hitch knot. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to take your knotting cord and what I like to do is hold the tail right here and I wrap the spool around my ruler six times at six feet. Cut it and you'll do that six times because you need six six foot lengths and then after you're done cutting them all you want to take your lighter and melt every single end that you have because this cord is braided and it will fray. So if you melt the ends like this and then roll it between your fingers it prevents the cord from fraying and also it makes it really easy to put beads on. So See how I have a nice pointed tip there so I can easily pick up my 60 seed beads and my 80 seed beads. If this here is thick at all, like if you have it too much of a ball at the end, you will not be able to pick up the 80s. So the pointier you can get this, the better. All right. So once you have all six of your cords cut, you melted all the ends, what you're going to do is split them up into three groups. You're going to do two cords at a time, and you're going to pass your cord up through a loop, make a lark's head knot, and then you're going to tie some square knots. So I have already have these two here done. I'm going to do the middle one with you guys. So here are my two cords, and what I just did is I put the ends together like this, Okay, and then I run my hands down, find the other two ends, okay, here's the other two ends, and then go like this, so that I have two loops down here. Now I have to pass these two loops up through the bottom of this, this here is the bottom, this is the top, it's decorative. So I have to pass these two loops up through this loop here, but that's kind of tricky. I can do it, but um, it's kind of difficult and annoying. So what I like to do to make this easy is I take a piece of thread, or you can do monofilament, something that's just very thin, and I'm passing the thread here through the two loops. I'm putting these two together, and I'm taking my finding, and I'm going through the back side with both of the threads and then I'm going like this pulling my cords through see that and then I just have to grab this thread pull it out I'm done with that and now what I have to do I'm gonna get these two cords here out of my way so separate these okay that one over there I have to make sure that these are parallel because if they're twisted, it's not going to look pr pretty. It's going to be very sloppy looking. So first of all, I need to make sure that my ends are even. Okay, so first we do this. Go like this. Get the ends even and see how pointed I made all of them so I can easily put the seed beads on. It's very helpful. So I'm going to stretch my arm out, put my other finger in these two loops, pull this tight, okay? And then I want to come back and make sure that my cords are parallel, and they are. Wow, that's a miracle. So do you see how they're straight? One is on top of the other. There's no twisting at all. They're, they're perfect. So I'm going to slide this down some, okay? Make a loop, pull my finger out. Actually, I'll make it a little bit smaller. Pass my four cords up through these loops. Okay. And then pull this like this. And you might have to flip one cord over the other. You just want it to look really nice and tidy. Okay, mine looks good, but I have to make sure that my ends are even, or at least close to even. Oh, they're pretty good. Okay, so this is what my ends look like. 
All right, we are good to go. I'm going to attach this bracelet to this here. Now, usually, I have over here this little rubber thing on my desk. It's under this glass, and what I was doing this whole time is I would lift up my glass and I would put the silver part here underneath, and then I attached my bracelet like this. Maybe you guys have something similar that you could do. And I worked on it, and it was awesome. But as you can see, it is not in camera view. It's way over here, so I can't make the bracelet like this. So what I'm going to do is take this here off. You can pinch it to get it off. Put this through my split ring. I should have the toggle on the inside. There we go. And then attach this back. And then I can work on it, but it is going to be a little loose, but that's okay. And I'm going to attach it to my desk this way. All right, I'm now set up. Hopefully this is close enough. And what I did is I took my two center cords and I clipped them to my tray. And I just pull my tray out. I'm working in my uh, keyboard drawer, my desk. And I pull this taunt. And then I can tie my square knots. Now on this side, in this side, I tied two square knots. But because of the knots that I tied right here, I have to make it longer in the middle. So I think I tied one, two, three, four. Yeah, so two square knots on this side, two on this side, and four in the middle. All right, and in case you've never tied square knots before, that is okay, I will show you how. So I always like to start my square knots with the right side because I'm right-handed. So you take the right cord, you put it over the left cord, or the center cord, and then you take the left cord, you put it over right cord, and then you go underneath the two centers and you pull it through the right loop. Like this. Pull this knot up. Pull it tight. Now that's just half a knot. That's not the whole square knot. Now for the rest of the knot, you take the left side, you have to swap, put the left over the center, right over left, under the two center and through the left loop. Okay, pull it up. Pull it tight. That is our first square knot right there. And I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit closer. Hopefully it's clear. I have the weirdest camera angle going on today. How I'm totally set up is really crazy. I've never set up like this before. And it took me like 45 minutes to do this. So hopefully everything goes well. All right. So I have one square knot tied. Now I'm going to tie another one. So again, take the right side over the center. Take the left cord over right underneath the center and through this loop. Bring it up. Pull it tight. I have to take the left cord now. Put it over center. Take right over left under center and through this loop. And there we go. We now have two square knots tied. I have to do two more. So right over center, left over right, under center, through the loop. Bring this up. Pull it tight. Now I have to do left. So left over center, right over left, under center, through the loop. Pull it tight. I have three knots. I'm going to take the right, go over center, left over right, under center, through the loop. Okay, and then I have to take the left, over center, right, over left, under center, through the loop. Pull it tight, and I now have my four square knots. Now I'm going to show you how to tie the diagonal double half hitch knot. So I'm going to take all of my cords except for these two and move them over here out of my way. Now I, I do have these cords here attached to my tray just to keep this stationary. And this cord here that's on the outer edge is going to be the one that's going to be laying across like this. And I'm going to tie half of these cords around this cord here. So I'm going to take this cord like this. And then I have my second cord here, and it's underneath of this cord, okay? I'm going to go like this, take my finger, and grab this cord, pull it through. So I have a loop like this. hope this makes sense. And I'm pulling this up like this. You want to pull this cord here over to the left, 
and then pull the one you're tying a knot with over to the right. And then I'm going to take the same cord, and this time I'm going to go over this cord, and then pull it through the loop, and pull this knot up. Okay? So I'm going to take this cord here, and I'm going to attach it to my tray, so I can keep this stationary. So I have my clips here and I just want this to remain in place as I'm going along. Okay, so that's tight. Now I'm going to take my next cord, which is this one. Okay. Gonna make sure we keep this organized. I'm going to take this cord and again, I'm going to go like this and wrap it around this one. Pull the tail through, just like this, okay? Pull this knot up. And I do, like, go in this direction, pull it up, because I really have to get to this, the center. I have to go straight, or at an angle, and, and I have to meet right up to this knot on this one, so... There's the first knot, and then I'm going to take the same cord again, go over top of this cord, okay? Really trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. It's very difficult with my setup. So I'm going to go like this, take this cord, pull it through, okay? And then pull this knot up. And again, I like to go like this, pull my left cord up this way. And then I'm going to just move this over here on my way because I'm done with that. And then I'm going to the next cord, this one here. So again, this has to go underneath of this one, okay? So I'm going I'm to take this cord and I'm going to wrap it around this one again. So just like that, okay? Pull this knot tight. And then I'm going to take it again and go over top of this one. Pull it through. Pull this knot up, and it's really good to use your fingernails to scoot that knot into place because this cord will loosen up if you don't have it tight enough, just like that. And I'm just going to move these cords over here out of my way, and then I have to go to the next cord, and again, so actually we're now going to the center ones here. This one here is still going to be underneath of this cord that's going in this direction, and I'm going to wrap it around like this, through the loop, okay, pull this tight. See how I now, here I'll loosen up again. See how we're now meeting this here? So see when I go like that, you want it to be just like this, meeting up to here, okay? I'm gonna go again, take this cord, wrap it over this one, pull it through the loop. See how it's loosening up here? So to fix that, I grab this cord, pull that tight, hold it there like that with my fingernail, and then take this loop, pull it down, Pull it tight. Okay, so now I have to untie or let go this clip here, which is holding these two cords down. I'm going to take this one here on the left and move that out of my way. And then I'm going to take this cord, okay, the last one on my right side, and I'm going to go, gosh, I hope you saw that. Make sure you see it again. Underneath, okay, grab your finger, stick the loop. Pull the cord through, pull this knot up. Do it again, but this time we're going over top, grabbing the cord, pulling it through the loop, and pulling it up. Okay, just like that. I'm going to take this cord, actually I'll take both of these for now, yeah, and I'm going to again attach this to my tray. I need this to stay taunt. And then the other one I'm going to unclip. Okay, so now all of these here are untied. And I think I will attach them over here to my tray. It really does help if you have something to attach this to. Try using a clipboard. I tried using a clipboard, but I have the newer ones. And I could not figure out how to attach my bracelet to it. But the old style clipboards that has the solid metal piece, you could use that to make this bracelet. Okay, now I'm going to go to this side. So I'm going to take all of these cords here. 
which is three, and move these over to the side for now. And then I have these cords here. This cord is going to go in this direction, and it's going to do the same thing that this cord here did. Okay, we're going to be tying these cords around this cord. So I'm going to go like this. I have to take this cord coming underneath this one. Okay, I'm going to go like this, pull it through, pull this cord over here to the right now. Okay, there's my first knot. Now I'm going to go over top, pull the cord through this loop, bring this knot down. Okay, then I'm going to move this cord here over here out of the way. And I'm going to take my next cord. So I'll straighten it out so you can see that there. Okay, again, this one's going underneath this one. And I'm going to go over top of this cord, loop through, pull this knot up, and again, take this cord, pull it to the right because we have to get this to meet up right here, like this side, okay? So there's one knot. Again, I have to go over top of this one. I just realized my bracelet is clinging the whole time on the tray. I hope that is not bothering you. It probably is. I've had comments before people are complaining about it. Okay, so just like that. And then move that out of the way. I normally don't wear bracelets because of that, but I recently put bracelets on. Okay, so again, pulling this one over here. This cord is underneath of my right cord, and I'm going to wrap it around, pull it through the loop, pull it down like that, go over top of this cord, pull it through the loop, and it got loose on me, so I'm going to go like this, snug it up, okay, and sometimes you may notice that your other cords will get loose, so I see these here, they look a little bit big, those knots, so I'm just going to go back and pull those snug, okay, and now I am right here, so this is my next cord, we're now going to meet this up, and let's see, alright, so take this cord now, go underneath this cord here, pull my knot up, Okay, like that. Again, go over top. Move my fingernail. Go like this. Pull this knot down. Okay, and then I have to remove all my cords there from the clips, and then my cords are free. I have this one cord right here that has to go under and over this one okay and then I'm gonna go over and under just like that hold that snug okay so now I have two center cords just like this my cords are split in half alright so I'm gonna go back to this bracelet that I almost have completed and I want to show you do you see how my right cord appears to be overlapping the left it's here done that way then this way throughout the entire bracelet it's done like that it's very consistent okay so I realized when I was making this that I had to keep that part consistent throughout the bracelet and also when I get here to doing this um, I call it a, a lattice pie weave because whenever I make a pie with a lattice crust I make it just like I do this here so if you look at this do you see how this left one's overlapping right I have that done throughout the entire bracelet so that's the second uh, part of this bracelet you have to keep consistent throughout so anyways um, I'm going to do the same thing on this one I'm going to have right overlapping the left so just like this, right's going to be over left. I'm going to take the left and make my little loop here. Pull this up. Snug it up. And then go over the right. Pull this up. Okay. Just like that. And there we go. And we are ready to add beads, but I should take my bracelets off because they're making rackets. So I'll be back. Now it's time for my favorite part 
the beads. Macrame is so much better with beads. So this cord here, we are going to still continue tying knots around. Okay. For now, though, I'm just going to put this down here to the side, and I'm going to take the next cord and put a bead on it. Just one bead, and it's going to be an 80 seed bead. And I guess I'm going to start with blue first. Okay. So one bead, 80. Bring the bead up. And then I'm going to swap hands. I have to hold this cord here in my left hand. And this cord here it needs to go underneath this cord because when I make my loops, my loops sit on top. So underneath, I go like this. Okay, I'm going to grab this cord here, just like this, making a loop. Slide this bead up. Okay, and then bring this knot down. Just like that. And then take this cord, go over top of this one, grab the cord, pull through the loop. And sometimes you'll find it gets loose, so I'm always cautious of that. Okay, so finishing that knot there. Okay, I'm now going to take this cord and put it over here with my other cords. I'm going to take the next cord now, this one, and we're going to pick up two beads. I have a dog hair in my beads. I'm going to pick up two Eidos. See how easily they slide on because I melted the end? Okay. There's my two beads. Sliding them down. I'm going to take this cord again in my left hand. And then the one that has my beads on it, I'm going to take that in the right hand. I'm going to go like this. Grab this cord. Wrap it around like that. I feel like I can't explain how to do that right there. I don't know why. Makes no sense, really. Okay, so pulling that knot up like this. And then I'm going to go over top of this cord. Okay. Pull this through. I'm going to pull this tight there because it's loosening up on me. Okay, and then pull the second loop down. Use my nails to tighten it like that. Take the next cord, so I have two now, and put it over here to the right. And then I'm going to take the third cord, and I'm going to pick up three beads. I'm going to do one eight oh, one six oh, one eight oh. I'm going to do pink, and then one more eight. Okay, just like that. Slide them down. Again, take this right cord, take the right cord in your left hand, and then take the left cord in your right hand, go underneath like this, take my finger up to the hole, grab the cord, pull it through, wrap it around, and make sure those beads stay up there as you slide this knot up. Okay, like that. Make sure there's no slack. It could be a little bit, but you don't want a lot. Okay, and then I'm going over top of this cord. Go like that. Bring that down. Okay, that's what I have so far. Take the next cord. So now we have three cords over here. Put it with those other ones. And then we're going to this one. Okay, this cord right here. So I have a total of five beads. All right, just like that. So again, take the right cord in your left hand, take the left cord in your right hand, slide these beads up. I'm gonna go like this, take my finger up through the hole, bring that cord down. Slide this up like this, okay. Take this cord, go over top of this one and through the loop. So see how I hold the last knot there with my thumb? Okay, and then I go like that. Pull that down. Now you gotta make sure you pick up the right amount of beads every time because the first time I designed this bracelet, I skipped an 80C bead that was like two rows up here 
in my bracelet and I continued going on and I was almost done and I looked and I saw that I had only one 80 seed bead and I was so bummed I'd take it apart and I was working on it late in the night and I just gave up on it and I went to bed and I came back to it the next day but you know this is all a part of designing jewelry and something I should point out to you guys is if you have to take your bracelet apart or some knots that you screwed up use a bead all to take the knots out this here really easily picks the knots up for you so you can fix it and um, I might show you a little trick on how to fix a mis uh, mistake uh, to help you guys out so anyways yeah mistakes happen especially when you make enjoy but you know you, you can't give up you gotta keep on beating keep on beating so right here is my last strand and I'm going to pick up I think it's seven beads this time back and I strung on seven beads sliding them down Again, I'm going to take this cord on the right side, hold it in my left hand, take the left cord and hold it in my right hand, and this cord needs to be underneath. The left needs to be under right, like this. Okay, so hold it like this, take my finger up to this hole, grab that cord, pull it through. I'm going to slide, did I finish that knot? I think I did. I'm going to slide this knot up. I have to hold the beads like this. Okay. And then I'm going to take this cord, go over top, pull it through, pull the whole tail through. Make sure that looks right. Okay. Hold it in place. And then bring that down. There we go. I have this side done. And now I have to do this side. So. I have to separate my cords so all of these ones here that I didn't attach I think it's half my cords six are gonna go over here now and I'm gonna work with these cords this one is going to get tied around so I think that I'm going to anchor I'm not gonna do this one because this one has to stay this way so I'm gonna go like this okay and I'm going to anchor these cords here at the bottom with my clip okay just like that this is the cord that I'm going to be tying these here around I'm going to tie these cords around this one so I'm going to unclip this okay and I have to take the next cord this one here which in case you're confused, I should probably count these for you. So I have one cord here off to the side, and then there's five here, okay? So this is actually my seventh cord, and this is my eighth cord. So I'm going to take the eighth cord and pick up one bead. And again, it's going to be an 8 and it's going to be the same color. Right, slide that bead down like this I'm going to take the left cord and hold it with my right hand now because we're swapping sides and then take the left cord or the right cord and hold it with my left hand I'm confusing myself and I'm gonna go like this okay hold it like this take my finger go through the loop grab that cord and pull this knot down Snug it up against my other knots, and then I'm going to go over top and through the loop. Again, I'm going to fix that first knot, and then pull this one down. Push it up with my nails. Get it stay in place, okay? And now this cord here is going to go over here, out of the way. I'm going to take my next cord now and pick up two beads again two eightos all right slide these down Take the left cord, hold it in the right hand, take the right cord and hold it in the left hand, like this. Ok, 
okay and then take my finger up to this hole pull that cord through and pull this knot down okay then I'm gonna go over top and through like that I think I'm gonna zoom out some now that I'm getting further down the bracelet just a little bit okay right there maybe okay then pull this knot down I found that I have to use my nails every time to adjust that knot there. If I don't, the knot will get loose. So that's something that's kind of important. Okay, now I'm going to do three beads on this side and I have to copy this side. So 180, 160, 180. 8, 6, and an eight. Slide them down. Now remember you gotta take the left cord and hold it with your right hand and take the right cord and hold it with your left hand. And the right cord has to go under the left cord. Okay. So like this. And then take your finger up through this hole grab that cord, pull it through, and slide this knot down, like that, it's looking good, looking good, okay, I'm going to take this cord, go over top of this one, and pull it through the loop, I think I'm going to zoom out more, I'm, I'm worried that I'm not getting it in frame, but I want to be close, so you can see, because you have to see up close, so... I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. I've never filmed like this before. If you guys saw my setup, you would laugh. It is kind of funny. My room is actually destroyed from trying to film like this. Okay, so I pulled that knot up. And I actually have a little bit of slack there. But let's see, is it going to be okay? Yeah, it's going to be okay. I think I was just pulling it tight and that's why it looked like slack. Okay, I'm going to take the next cord now and pick up five beads. Eight o, three six o's, and an eight o. There's my beads. Again, my right cord has to go under my left cord. Like this. Pull this through. Slide this down. Like that. Wrap this over the top through the hole. Pull that down. Okay, I'm gonna do this last cord now to pick up seven beads. All right, here are my last seven beads on this side. Again, you want to take the cord on the right and hold it with your left hand. And you want to go under the cord on the left, which is now in your right hand. And hold it like this. And then take your finger, put it through, grab that cord. Okay, slide this knot down. Like this. Actually, flatten it like this between my fingers. I slide that down. And then... You have to go over top of this cord and use your finger to pull it through. Okay, but it always loosens up down here. So pull that down like that. And then grab this cord. Tighten that knot up. Alright, so now we have beads on both sides. And I do come in here and I grab it like this and I pull it a little bit. Just a little bit of a tug to relax the beads because they're kind of tense. See, it lays better. And now we're ready to do the weaving down here. So I'm going to take my clip off. Now all of my cords are loose. And going back to this real quick. See how the left cord is overlapping the right? So we're going to start with that. And I'll move those out of the way. 
Okay. So, find center. Okay, here is the center. All right, that's center. Now there are a few different ways you could do this part here instead of weaving this. I actually thought that I could take like four cords and put a large hole bead on them and then have the other cords going straight. But then I realized, well, if I do that, then the cords here in the center that are four cords are going through the one large hole beads, large hole bead, they're going to get twisted around each other and I'm going to lose track of which cord is which. So that is why I am doing it this way, but yeah, you could probably also tie um, square knots in this area with the four center cords, tie square knots, yeah, you could do that. So the four center cords, center cords tie square knots, but then you're going to have to figure out how many you will need to fit in this diamond pattern here. It might be like six square knots, I don't know. But anyways, I really like how the way I did it, so I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So I'm going to go to the left side here and I'm going to grab my first cord and maybe I should like really zoom in on this. I'm going to adjust my camera because you got to see this. Alright, so I'm going to go over here and grab the next cord. This part here can be a little confusing, but as long as you try your best to keep it organized, it'll be all right. Okay, I'm gonna take the left cord and I'm gonna go over the right cord. I'm not gonna take this cord and put it over here with the other ones. And then I have to take the next cord, okay? And I'm gonna go take my left and go underneath the next cord and then put that cord over there. And then the next one I have to go over top of Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. So basically you're weaving over, under, over, under, over, under. Or under, over, under, over. Okay, and then I'm going to go, I went over top of that one. I'm now going to go underneath the next one. So pull that over here. And then I have this cord here. Now, this cord, let's scoot those knots up. See how this cord here is really sticking out? We are not going to use this cord. We are going to leave that cord alone. It's going to stay over here. So this cord here is the one I'm going to be tying knots around. So this cord has to go underneath of this one. Okay, just like this. I'm going to zoom back out some. Not that much. Okay. My left cord is going to go underneath the right cord like this, and then I'm going to put my finger through and grab that cord, pull it through. I'm going to take this cord and hold it like this in this direction because I'm finishing my diamond pattern. Okay, and go like that. And then I'm going to take the same cord and go over the left, pull it through. And then pull that up. Okay, so now I have two cords that so are going to be over here on this side. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go, I'm going to separate these down the center again, okay, like this. So I'm going to pull these down. And then I'm going to take this cord here, which is going under the left cord, so it's my first cord but on the right side now that I'm going to, okay? This one's going under left, so that means that my right cord now has to go over the next left cord, okay? So then this cord is now going to go over here, so I'm going to move all of these over, okay? So it's going over the left, and now I have to go under the next one, okay, like that. So this cord I'm going to move over here out of the way. And then I have to go over the next cord. Okay, so again I'm going to move this one here out of the way. 
And then this one here, just like on that side, this one's going to stay here. This one's actually going to get beads put onto it. The next thing we'll do with that is beads. So I'm moving this one out of my way, and then I have this one here. And this is the cord I'm going to be tying my knots around. So I'm going to hold this cord like this now. Okay, I'm swapping hands. This one here has to be underneath of this cord. This is when we're tying knots on. So right, left is now going to be in my right hand and right is going to be in my left hand and the right cord is going to go under the left cord. Okay, just like that. I'm going to go like this. Take my finger, put it through the loop. Pull the cord through and slide this knot down. Okay, just like that. Don't pull it too tight. I'm going to take this cord now and go over top of that one. Still tying a knot with the same cord. Hold that knot in place and bring this down. Okay, looks good. Tension looks just right. So now I have two cords that I'm going to toss over here. Now I have to take all my cords again. Grab them all, okay? When you grab them all, you'll see that you'll have these two here going out to the side. Those are the two we've already done, so I'll leave them over there. Okay, so now I have these. I have to go to the second cord on the right side now. Okay, I'm going to take that cord. I'm going to take the rest of these, the right cords, and put them over there out of my way. And then I'm going to take the next one on the left this one here okay I'm gonna move those out of the way so the next cord on the left side I'm gonna take that cord and I'm gonna pull up and I'm gonna take the right and go underneath the left like this and the reason why I'm doing that is because if you look up here the left cord went under the right so now the left cord is gonna go over right so I have to put this cord over here in my way Okay, and then the right cord is now going to go over left. Okay, so put that cord out of the way. And then I'm going to go under the next cord, like that. And then put this cord over here out of the way. And now I'm at the last one, and I have to tie knots around this one. So this one always has to go, the one that you're tying knots with always has to go under the other cord because you have to loop over top of that cord okay so holding it like this like that I'm going to take my finger put it through the loop grab this cord pull it down pull this knot up like this okay make sure it looks good I need the right amount of tension I think that's it okay slide that up I'm going to go over top with the same cord again just that little bit pull it up, pull it snug okay so now I have three cords on this side I have to grab all my cords again these two here are going to stay over there alright Let's see, I have to take my second cord on the left now. I think I'm going to move, yeah, I'm going to move all of those over there out of the way. And I have to find my next cord on the right side. Okay, which is this one. So my left cord is currently going over right. That's the last thing I did right there. So now left is going to go underneath of the next right cord so I'm going to put this cord over here with those and then I have to go over top of my next right cord with my left like this okay so I'm going to put that over there to the side and then this left cord has to go under right and I'm going to swap hands so now right is going to become left and left is going to become right Oh my gosh, this sounds so confusing, but it's really not that bad. If you can watch this and you understand what I'm doing, then you could totally make this bracelet. Okay, it's really not that difficult. 
And I'm not highly skilled at macrame, so I was actually really proud of myself for making this. So I think you guys can do it too. So now I have to take the left cord, put it under the right cord. Okay, I'm going to hold the right cord in my left hand like this. Take my finger, put it up through here, grab that cord, pull through, bring this knot down. Let's see. Okay. And then I'm going to take the same cord, put it over top of this one. I have to tighten this back up a little bit. It's getting a little loose. Loosey goosey. And pull that knot up like that. Okay. Now you can come in here with your bead all and go like this and adjust this if you feel like it's not tidy. That helps a lot. All right. So now I'm going to separate my cords again. So I have these three here. Those are going to stay on this side. I have these three over here. Okay. I'm going to take the cord. Let's see. Do I go this way? I'm going to take... This one has to go... I think I'm going to take my right cord. Yeah. Or do I? No, I think it's left. I think I have to do left now. So I'm going to take left. These have to stay straight. These three go to this side. These three go to that side. I'm going to take my left cord, which is this one. Okay. And then I have to find my next right, which is this one. So, my left cord is currently going under my right cord. So, my left cord is now going to go over my next right cord. Okay? And then I have to get the next cord right here, which it is going to go under. And then grab this and pull these over here to the side and right here is where I have to use my awl more to scoot these along okay looks good yep look back check your work okay now I'm going to take the cord that's on the left put that in my right hand take my left cord put it in my right cord put it in my left hand hold it like this take my finger go up through this loop grab this cord like this okay and then go over pull that cord so that nice not tight like that okay I'm then going to move all four of these over here to the side okay and then I have these are going to the side and these are going straight down so four on this side now I have to take this cord scoop those up I'm going to take the cord that's on the right side okay this one here and I have to go over top of the next left cord like this okay and then I'm gonna go under this cord we're getting close to the end okay so now I'm gonna hold the left cord in my right hand and the right cord in my left hand and I'm gonna loop through here bring this knot up okay now I'm gonna go over and through the loop Pull this snug, bring that knot down. Okay, so now I have four cords on my left side and four cords on my right side, and then I have these four cords here. Now, two of these cords, these two here, are the ones that we're wrapping our knots around. Okay, see that? So, I'm now going to take my right cord 
and I'm going to go over my left cord like this. You can really see what you have to do just by looking at this weave. Once you like watch me do this, I think two times should be enough. You can look back at what you've already done and you pretty much like walk yourself through doing this part right here. Okay? So, let me make sure. All right. I'm going to go to the to the I think I want to go to the left side. So I'm going to move these cords over here out of the way. I'm taking the cord from the right. I'm going underneath my left cord. Okay. Slide that knot up. I'm going to go over through the loop. Again, slide this knot up. Pull it snug. Okay. I'm going to get those out of my way. I'm taking the cord from the left, going over or under the right side, holding it like this, bringing my finger up, grabbing the cord, pulling it through, nodding right there, again over this one. Okay, so now we are smack dab in the center. And you can go back, check your work. I really like using the awl to go like this and scoop, scooch in my cords to make it look tidy. You can see if you mess anything up. I think I did a good job. See here, I'm going over, under, over, under, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Under, over, under, over. Yep. Okay, so I have to continue this part right here where I said you want this to be continuous where the right appears to be overlapping the left. So I'm going to move these cords here. Take the two center cords. Move these two out of my way like this. I'm going to hold the right cord in my left hand. And I'm going to take the left cord, hold it in my right hand. And this cord needs to go under. Okay. So left is going underneath right like this and then I'm going to put my finger in this hole grab that cord pull this knot up like this okay and then go over pull the cord like this and bring this knot up and there we go we completed that part so now I have Alright, so this is where we're currently at, and I'm realizing I should stop here because I filmed three videos today, and I'm, it's looking like this video is probably about an hour long, just the bracelet video itself. So I'm going to stop here because of that, and also because, really, you're just going to be repeating this area here and this area here again, and all you have to do, okay, you're not going to be lost, is just rewind the video to where I started here. At the first row of the diagonal double half hitch knots, rewind to this area there, because you're going to be doing the same thing down here. So you're going to put the beads on the left side first and then on the right side and then you're going to do this lattice weave again and you're going to do the half hitch knots again and you're just going to be repeating these two areas over and over throughout the bracelet until you get to the length you need. Now this bracelet here is eight inches long. My closure area is two inches. My closure is really big. So if you're making like a seven and a half inch bracelet, I have eight rows, you might have to do this maybe nine times, maybe ten times. I don't know if you're using the slide clasp, that's a really small clasp and you will have to do a lot more knotting and bead work to make up the difference with this clasp here. So I am going to start the next, the very next knot with you guys just to make sure that you're not lost. So I'm picking up a bead just like we did up here, okay? One bead, I split my cords in half. I have this cord here which I'm going to tie my knots around. I just thought I would show this area here so you're not confused. And I have my first bead right here on this cord. And I'm going to take this cord here and hold it in my left hand. And then take the left cord and hold it in my right hand. And I'm going to go just like this. Take and grab that cord, pull it through, and slide this knot down. Okay, just like that. And then go over this cord, pull that through. 
inside the knot down. Okay, and then the next cord I'm going to put two beads on. So it's pretty simple. Really, all you have to do, like I said, is rewind the camera to that area right there, and you're going to be repeating the beads on this side, this side, then you're going to do the lattice weave, and you're going to do the half hitch knots again, and just keep going until you get to the length you need, and I will be back and show you how to finish off the bracelet. So I'm back. It's the next day, and I did some more work on the bracelet last night, and I'm ready to show you guys how to finish this off. So looking here at my original bracelet, this is what it looks like. I finished this one last night, and I'm kind of bummed out. I wish that I realized this before, so I tie the knots on this side of the bracelet, and I cut them, and I melt them, and as you can see, you can see the melted um, cord here, and when you flip the bracelet over to the back side, you don't see the melted cord at all, so I didn't realize that, and I wish that I had tied... Um, the cords here on the back and cut them on the back because then that would be hidden. It's not that big of a deal. I'm still going to wear this one. This one here I love so much. It, I love this one more than this one. I just wish that I realized that and did it on the back side. So for this one, I'm going to do it on the back side. So aren't you guys happy that I have these mistakes and then I tell you about the mistakes so you don't have these problems? If I were you, I'd be happy. Alright, so let's do this so what I did is I passed my cord up through the bottom here of the loop I already did these two sides you're gonna want to do the middle first and what I did last time I didn't do this time but I took the ruler and I measured this part here on the other end to see how long I would need this to be right but this time I kind of guesstimated how much I needed and there was a little space here and I felt like I needed this to be longer so what I just did is grab the knots and I went like this and I slid them up and it gave me just enough space to put the last knot in and it worked out good so I, I, I didn't have to do it uh, twice it actually worked the first time so what you're gonna want to do next is to take a bead all and you're gonna want to separate your cords so if I go like this and pull on this cord it's actually this one right here okay so I put that one off to the side and then pull on this side cord Okay, and it's this cord right here, so I want that one on the side. And then I have my two center cords here. Okay, so I already have mine all organized. I did this before hand, so it didn't take long, but I just wanted to show you real quick. And then you want to pull them all snug so they are taunt. Okay, and you kind of want it to be like looking the same distance to this side so it's even. So I'm just going to go like this. Okay, and then I'm going to take, I swear, every time I film a video, the cat likes to get in the litter box and just go to town. It drives me crazy. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's really aggravating. Okay, so I'm going to take the right side and go like this. Okay, and then I'm taking the left side going over the right. And then I have to feed the left in through the bottom of the bracelet and through this hole right here and right here is my loop on the right side so I'm going like this okay so tying the first knot you want to adjust this by going like this you're gonna pull the two cords here okay let's see am I gonna have enough room I think I will Okay, so now the left has to go over like this. The right is going to go under left, and then right cord is going to feed down through this hole, and it's going to go through this loop over here on this side. And then I pull my two cords like this. I'm going to pull them tight. Okay, and I can go like this some to adjust so I can get my next knot in there because I am a little close. I think it's going to work. If it's not the cat in the litter box, it is the bird screaming. Alright, so I did the left side, now I have to do the right. So I'm going to go like this, take the left, go over the right cord, feed the left through this hole, okay, and then through the loop right here, and then pull both ends. Looks good. I do this one more time, so now I'm going to put the left over 
like this. Take the right, go over the left cord. Okay, feed it through this hole and then through the left loop of my bracelet and then pull these two cords. All right, there we go. It looks good. Now I'm going to take this off of my desk and I'll show you how to melt the ends. I'm back and before I show you how to finish this, there's some things I need to talk about. So I do have a nice amount of cord left over and this is because my clasp is over two inches long. I think it's like two and a quarter inches. So if you use these three loop sliding clasps, you will have to tie more knots and add more beads so you will be using up a lot of this cord, maybe almost all of it, if you have to extend your bracelet in order to use this closure because you don't have a closure like I'm using here. So that's one thing I wanted to say. And also, because I'm tying knots on the back side, do you see how these here knots now appear round? So see how this side looks flat and this side looks round? But when you flip it over, this side's flat. So that's one thing, another thing that I want to tell you guys. And also, if you're afraid to cut and burn your knots or your cords because you could accidentally hit a spot on your bracelet and ruin your bracelet and it would be destroyed. If you're afraid to burn your knots, what you can do is tie the knots on this side like I did here, okay? So that it would look flat like this on each end. And then your cords would be on this side instead of on the back. And what you would do is you would take these two cords here Okay, and you would go like this, overhand knot, pass the cord through this loop, take your bead all, slide the knot down, and then pull it out like pearl knotting. And then you would do the same to this side. You would tie these two here together, so those two would be tied, these two, and then you do the same on these here. And then once you have those tied, make sure they're tight, you would put a bead onto each cord, and I think that I would do the metallic bead. And that way it would look like fringe, but you have to tie the knots on this side so that, because this is the top of the bracelet, because of the closure, so that it looks good, okay? So that's an alternative, but you will want to melt the very last knot, so after you put the beads on the ends of the cord, you tie a knot and then melt it so that it doesn't unravel. But um, that would be easy to do because that would be sticking out away from all your work and you won't have to worry about messing anything up. But I have decided that I'm going to finish mine like this and I did come up with a couple tricks to make this easier. I have a bead scooper here and I know that it's kind of tricky to burn the cords that are in here in the middle. So what I do is I slide this through and I take my lighter to this cord right here, after I cut it, it's going to be really close to all my work. So I go like this and I melt it down and it's fine, it doesn't touch the rest of my bracelet. So I'm going to do one side with you guys and then I'll let you do the rest by yourself, but I just want to show you my little trick. Now if you don't have a bead scooper to do this with, go in the kitchen and get a silverware. You can use maybe a butter knife, you can use a spoon handle or a fork handle. Just put it up underneath there, use it as a shield so you don't hit the rest of your bracelet. Alright, so I pulled my cords, cords really tight and I'm ready to cut them. If I can find my cutters. Okay, so I'm gonna cut my cord about a quarter of an inch long, like that. Okay, so see how I'm bending my bracelet so it's sticking out away from my work? And I'm going to go like this, melt it, and I like to go like that. See that? I hope I saw that. I realized it was not in view. I wasn't really looking at my camera. Okay. I go like this, and I melt it into the knots. I push it into the knots. So see that, how I push it into the knots with my lighter? It looks good. I just want to make sure it's not sharp. And mine's not, but sometimes you might have little sharp edges. Like super tiny edges. So you can come in here and just go like this and trim off the teeny little pieces. Just make sure that you don't mess up the bracelet. So now I'm going to cut... I think I'm going to do these two. And I like to do the two together. So the ones that we buried underneath the square knots... I do them at the same time. Two birds with one stone method. Okay, so again, I'm going to cut... Let's see. 
my handle just slid in my cutters. Okay, like that. And for some reason these aren't touching. And all the other times I've done this they were. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to get these to touch each other. Alright, got it. And I just need to... get it to where they're not. Let's see, where's that cord at? There's a cord that's sticking out right here. This one. This one needs to go away. Okay, there we go. I'm going to hold it like this. And then push it in like that. That looks good. I hope I was in frame. It's really hard to look at the camera and do this because I'm afraid I'm going to ruin my bracelet. Okay, so this here is a tricky one because it's close to that. So that's when I take this, or you could do silver, like I said, like a handle to a spoon or something. Come in here, cut my cord. I need to get those Zeron thread cutters. I think they're on Amazon, but I'm always using these wire cutters to do it. These are $40 Lindstrom cutters. And I saw someone say one day that cutting cord with your wire cutters can dull the blade. And I did not know that, so I should probably invest into one of those. It's your own thread and cord cutter, okay? Melt that down. I do like to use a knife here because I can't really use my fingernail because it messes up my nails. So I'm going to go like this. Get a good beat on there. Okay, one more time. Let's see, I gotta come up a little bit. A little scary. I almost got it. This time I'm gonna do it with my finger. Oh, that's good. Okay. I did melt this there a little bit, but it's totally fine. It did not break the cord. As long as you don't break the cord, you'll be okay. It's okay if you singe other cords around it. So that's good. I'm going to do the same thing to these here and we're all done. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This bracelet was a ton of work for me to design. I've been working on it actually for a few weeks. I designed it a few weeks ago and I realized that it was so much work that I don't know if I should film this. So I, I almost did not film this because designing it was a lot of work. And I realized that it was going to be huge for me to film a video like this. And I started filming it yesterday. And after I ate dinner yesterday, I spent several hours doing the work so that I can film the rest of it today. And now I have to finish it and go take pictures and edit. And this is going to be like a three or four day video to get up. So yeah, a lot of work goes into making these videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about this bracelet down there in the comments. And tell me if you want to see more macrame like this. Um, I have done simple macrame in the past. This is the most extreme that I have gone with my macrame and although this looks really difficult it's actually not that bad it's just a time consuming project because we're working with so many cords we're tying a lot of knots we have a lot of beads to put on please like this video leave me a comment subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and make sure that you click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos and check me out on my social media sites I'm on Facebook Instagram Pinterest and Twitter thanks for watching